remembrance and in your deen allow me to advance help me in my quest permit me to pass the ultimate test help me in my quest permit me to pass the ultimate test assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Praise be to Allah alone, we praise him and we seek his help. Whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one, and whomsoever Allah leaves astray, none can show him guidance. May the best peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Brothers and sisters, welcome to another live edition of your program, Ask Koda. A quick reminder with our phone numbers, area code 002, then 023855131, alternatively, last three digits, 132. And my Facebook page is the R Muhammad Salah official. Love to hear from you as soon as you start ringing in, inshallah. Meanwhile, I will be happy to start answering some of the uh, questions that I received on the page. Um, uh, Babakar says, I'm working as security uh, guard in an organization. What shall I do whenever it is the time to offer the prayer? Uh, I don't. Um, I can leave my work to attend the prayer in a mosque and I'm in a real mess. You shouldn't be in a real mess. You shouldn't be in a real mess. In fact, according to the Quranic reference, Allah the Almighty says that He does not lay on anyone any commands beyond His or her capacity. Working as a security personnel is a job that we need almost everywhere. And if the person were to leave his spot in which he was ordered to guard, in this case, it would be very, very problematic. To the point that, similarly on the battlefield, Allah the Almighty prescribed what is known as the prayer of fear. The reference in this ayat refer to if you are on the battlefield and there is a fear that the enemies may attack you while you're praying. So we have to split the army into two halves. While we shorten the prayer since we are traveling, we also get to divide the congregation. So the same imam will lead the prayer of the two rakahs, two units. And half of the army will join the imam in praying the first rakah. Then they would leave while the imam is still on hold and the rest of the army will take their place. All of that while they happen, their weapons. Why? Because they are on the battlefield. A security guard is the same. He is not supposed to leave his spot to go and attend the prayer in the mosque. So you're permitted as long as you are on duty from attending the prayer in the masjid. But it doesn't exempt you from praying on your spot. If anyone says, I can't, the, the, the answer will be simply, what do you do when you have to answer the call of nature? When you have to use the bathroom, what do you do? I have to go. This is the most important thing in life, to attend the prayer on time. You have plenty of time. You can pray in the beginning of the time or an hour later, if the time allows. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about if the time between the two prayers is longer than that. But some prayers, such as between Maghrib and Isha, you don't have that much time, so you pray as soon as possible. You pray right on the spot. There must be an alternative, somebody to cover up for you. But as far as for your question, which is that you cannot attend the prayer in the, in, in the masjid and you are in a real mess, you shouldn't feel sorry because you're exempt and you're not blameworthy. What proves your sincerity is whenever you're off duty, what do you normally do? I pray in, in the congregation, in the masjid. That's a sign that... You're really eager to pray in the masjid. So what prevents you is your duty. In this case, you're pardoned. Uh, the following question is from uh, Asima. Asima says, I almost memorized the entire surah of Al-Baqarah whenever I was pregnant. And the problem that I forgot what I memorized and I have heard that memorizing with the same <clears throat> I have a hard time memorizing back with the same strength uh, that I had during uh, pregnancy. I guess I got your question. And she's saying that, uh, am I committing a sin for forgetting what I have memorized, especially the two great surahs, Al-Baqarah and Al-Imran? By the way, brothers and sisters, 
memorizing the Quran or any part of the Quran is highly recommended, no doubt. As in the hadith, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said that he will be said to the reciter of the Quran, Liqari al Quran, on the Day of Judgment, Iqra, Wartaqi, Waratil, Kama Kunta Turatilu fi dunya. What does it mean? Look at this magnificent word, a person whom Allah blessed with memorizing the Quran that he shall get on the Day of Judgment. How many ayahs have you memorized of the 6,000 plus ayahs? I've memorized that many ayahs. Keep reciting because your rank will be equivalent to the number of verses that you memorized in the dunya. Memorizing the Quran is not really of a big deal. What is of a big deal is maintaining what you have memorized, the revising. That's why in another hadith, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, instructed that ta'ahadu al-Qur'an, which means keep up with revising what you have memorized of the Qur'an because it evaporates if you do not keep up with it. It runs away. It slips out of your mind, similar to or even greater than the camels whenever they are on the loose. So what you need to do is revise on regular basis. You've memorized Surah Al-Baqarah, revise what you've memorized on regular basis. This is how you maintain the uh, uh, memorization of what Allah bless you with. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi. Aisha from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Aisha. Could you raise your voice a little bit, please? Okay, please, I have three questions, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, my first question is, said they said in Sujood, you will not read ayahs from the Quran. But what about that? Rabbana Asna, can you do it in Sujood or not? That's my first question. Okay. My second question is, um, like when you're making dua to Allah, that you should do it loudly. And so people are saying you should do it silently because they seem to tell your problem and read your, like, Okay, you're asking about if you have a need, you have to specify it whenever you're asking Allah. in your supplication. Am I right? Yes, to Allah, right? Loudly. Okay. And some people are saying that you should not do it loudly, but you should do it silently so that not you should not share your problem. What was that? Well, I, I've heard two things. One of them, which I understand that making it loudly, but you also mentioned reciting a particular surah. Am I right? You said surah jinn? Uh, uh, no, not jinn. I mean, like when you're making to ask for Allah, you should do it loudly, right? Uh, well, that's your and second question. I got that. Okay, then, okay the, then people are saying you should not do it loudly so that you should not hear your problem. That you should do it silently, even if you're asking Allah your problem. Okay. Okay, did you get that? Yeah, I did. Thank you, Aisha. Okay, my third question is, okay, my third question, Shay. Mm -hmm. okay, my third question is, like, I pass like 13, 14 of every month. Great. Aisha? Hello? Yes, I said I fast 13, 14, 15 for every month. Mm -hmm. But some of the months, like my period is coming, so I will not get the 13, 14, 15. Should I make it in other days, or like I should leave it since I've missed it since the expression? That's a very good question. Thank you, Sister Aisha, for that. Okay. Uh, Aisha from Nigeria, first question is that, is there any prohibition against society in Quran while in the state of sujood? Yes, indeed. We're forbidden again is reciting Quran while prostrating yourself, whether in the fard or the uh, supererogatory prayers. Then she followed up that by saying, What about reciting Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan? Or Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa zurriyatina qurat an any verse of the Quran which is an ayah, but meanwhile it is an instruction of how to supplicate. What is your intention? Is your intent to recite Quran? That is not permissible in sujood. Is your intention to make a supplication? That is the purpose of prescribing these supplications 
in the Quran so that we imitate them we invoke Allah through them that is the best way to invoke Allah through these supplications you're not reciting Quran though you're making supplications okay so Rabbana hab lana min azwajina wa zurriyatina qurrata a'yunin waj'anna lilmuttaqina imama is a segment of an ayah of surah al-furqan I'm not reciting an ayah I'm making dua permissible that is in sujood uh, the ayah of surah al-baqarah Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fi al-akhirati hasanatan wa qina adhab al-nar again I'm not reciting Quran I'm just invoking Allah رَبَّنَا إِنَّنَا سَمِعْنَا مُنَادِيًا يُنَادِي لِلْإِمَانِ The ayat of Surah Al-Imran. Again, I'm making dua permissible. Okay? The second question is, while making supplication, do you have to raise your voice? Or should you make it silently? And with those who are telling you so that Allah can hear you, I would like to comment on that. You remember, and the story of changing the Qibla the ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah say what قَدْ نَرَى تَقَلُّبَ وَجْهِكَ فِي السَّمَاءِ فَلَنُوَلِّيَنَّكَ قِبْلَةً تَرْضَاهَا in fact we don't have a narration that says that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him keep making dua out loud asking Allah to change the Qibla but Allah knew what he wanted he saw him while turning his face towards heaven anticipating uh, Allah to answer his wish and to send down uh, Gabriel with the revelation to change uh, the Qibla فَلَنُوَلِّيَنَّكَ قِبْلَةً تَرْضَاهَا so that was understood in ayah number 144 of Surah Al-Baqarah add to that beautiful reference the very famous ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah as well I believe 186 وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي this ayah is to answer your question or reveal in an answer to your question normally the companions would ask Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him questions concerning their religious affairs worldly affairs so there was a question here okay which is in 186 chapter number 2 whenever my servants ask you concerning me what was the question they said O Prophet of Allah is our Lord near so that he can hear us if we just whisper or is he far away so that we have to scream out loud so that he could hear our call so the answer came immediately and that is the only answer in the entire Quran. There have been many questions across the Quran. The answer normally begins with Qul, 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 say, say, O Muhammad. That is the only time the answer is delivered without say, in order to shrink the distance between the servant and his creator. The answer is فَإِنِّي قريب. I am indeed near. There will be another question. There pops up another question, which is, how near how near is Allah to us the answer is delivered in another answer in another ayah and we are nearer to him than his own jugular veins so this is how near is Allah the Almighty to any of us so if you make prayer and supplication within yourself he hears it he knows it and he will definitely answer it if you say it out loud, he does hear it as well. Whether you make it, seek it. Look, in the same surah, Allah the Almighty says, by the end of Surah Al-Baqarah, ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard. To Allah belongs whatsoever is in the heavens and the earth. وَإِن تُبِدُوا مَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَوْ تُخْفُوهُ يُحَاسِبَكُمْ بِهِ اللَّهِ whether you disclose or you conceal what, it, what is in yourselves, even if you keep it in your heart, even if you don't talk about it. So he is fully aware of it. So whether you make dua out loud or you make it quietly or you don't even move your tongue with it, Allah the Almighty knows what you mean. So 
the question now is what is preferable? What is more preferable? To make it out loud or to make it quietly? وَلَا تَجْهَرْ بِصَلَاتِكَ وَلَا تُخَافِتْ بِهَا وَابْتَغِ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ سَبِيلًا Beautiful answer. Well, if you're making supplication in public and you have audience hearing you and saying Ameen after your supplication, you should make it out loud. If you're making supplication on your own and be between and yourself, it is better to move your tongue with it and recite it in a way you can hear yourself. You don't have to make it out loud. So in between, depending on the circumstances, you're only praying for yourself, okay? On the day of Arafah, on at the time of breaking your fast, and before you break your fast, you sit and you face the Qibla and you supplicate. You don't have to make people hear you if you are by yourself, like you're sitting in, in the masjid. And that happens in the Haram. You've got hundreds of thousands of people waiting for the adhan to be called. Everyone wants to make dua on their own and somebody makes dua out loud to disturb others. It's not recommended. You should make dua in private. You can only hear yourself or without sound, okay? So this is recommended in this case. By the end of a halqa and you're making dua so that the audience can benefit out of the dua, you're not permitted to pray for yourself. You gotta use the plural sense you say, Rabbana uh, atina, Rabbana lana for all of us because you have audience. And in this case, you make it audible so that they can hear you. The third question is, MashaAllah, our sister, she fasts on 13th, 14th, and 15th of every lunar month. May Allah bless you. What if the menses fall during the 13th, 14th, and 15th? What if I'm traveling, and while traveling, it is most recommended to break your fast? What if I have flu? What if I have any reason that I wasn't able? What if a guest showed up? He, I was fasting yesterday, and I guest showed up. It is recommended, in this case, to honor your guest. Okay, so you got to break your fast with him to make him eat. Okay, he's coming from out of town. So is your fasting wasted? No, because you still have plenty of days to fast during the month. The purpose of fasting the three days of every month, generally speaking, is because the ayah of Surah Al-An'am. مَنْ جَاءَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ فَلَهُ عَشْرُ أَمْثَالِهَا Whosoever brings a single good deed, the reward for it is ten times thereof. So, if you make a good deed, the reward is ten times more. If you fast for three days times ten, we're talking about thirty. Ah, that is pretty much similar to the number of the days of each month, almost, correct. So if you fast three days every month, it counts like you've been fasting for the entire year when it comes to the reward. If your menses happens to be on any of these days, make it up some other days and that will do it, inshallah. Um, Muhammad Hakim says, when I perform my prayer, I cannot concentrate. What can I do about it? He has yes, three questions. And uh, his first question is the most important. I believe that it is also your question. It is a question of every one of the viewers. It is the most problematic issue that we all face. Not only you, not only Hakim, myself, and everyone. And it is not something that you can take and answer and you treat it once and for good. No. This is one of the things which needs maintenance. That's why I'm going to recall here the last ayah of Surah Al-Ankabut. وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِيْنَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ It is a matter which requires constant struggle and Allah promised those who struggle for our sake we shall guide them to our safe path and indeed Allah is with the good doers what kind of struggle do we have here and the long hadith the Prophet Sallallahu said whenever the adhan is called Satan flees you cannot tolerate hearing the word Allahu Akbar or Hayya ala salah or Hayya ala al-falah cannot tolerate that then when the Mu'adhin ceases, he returns.
to whisper to whom, oh, you got to do this, you got to do that, so that he may withhold you, delay you, or hinder you from attending the prayer on time. Then if the iqama is been called, once the iqama is called, then Satan will flee one more time. Cannot stand the call to prayer. Then once the iqama has finished, he returns. Why? There's a lot of business to do. He comes to people who are there praying to whisper to them, Uzkur kada, wazkur kada, wazkur kada. Remember, you have a meeting. Remember, you have to do this. Remember, you were supposed to make this phone call. You remember, you need to text this person. Oh, you need to check on them. Everything that you've forgotten now will pop up and will show up in the prayer. Why? It's all because of the whispers of Satan. And this is something Satan is tireless. He doesn't take a break. Al Hassan al Basri, may Allah have mercy on him, may Allah be pleased with him as well. Once was asked, Does Satan sleep? He said, I wish. At least we could have taken a break. Doesn't sleep. He's restless. What does he do in his life other than misleading human beings and misguiding them? That's it. That is the only thing that he does himself and his offspring. In this case, our struggle is also continuous and it should be constant. In the beginning of Surah Al-Mu'minun, the Almighty Allah linked success to achieving and maintaining khushu' in the prayer. Qari aflaha al-mu'minun. Successful indeed are the believers. Who are they? Al-lazina hum fi salatihim khashi'un. Those who tranquil in their prayers. Okay, I'm going to tranquil in my prayer. How? Is it something that you recall it whenever you want and it just happens? No, sir. One of his questions is about why is music haram? Imagine somebody has been listening to songs and singing along with it, watching a movie, an action movie, watching, watching a, a romance, a, a drama. Then it is a prayer time or a soccer game. Then he gets up in order to pray. Definitely. His heart is preoccupied with what he has been watching, with what he has been busy with. So throughout the prayer, he'll be occupied by the same. That's why there is a process of preparation for the prayer, of making perfect wudu. But each time you wash a body part, the sins which were committed by this limb or this organ would fall while you're washing it as in the other hadith that we discussed before. Then after the prayer, you walk to attend the prayer in the masjid as early as possible so that you attend the prayer from the beginning in congregation. Each footstep eliminates, erases one of your sins and it raises you into one higher rank. These are all preparation. You sit and wait after you pray the sunnah, waiting for the prayer, not the opposite. When you hear, you've been watching and busy with whatever. Then whenever it is a prayer, he jump. Ah, and he say, Alhamdulillah, I did my part. You didn't do your part. Because in the hadith, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, whenever the person finishes his prayer and he is dismissed, يُكْتَبُ لَهُ يعني, It means the reward that he gets out of the prayer could be one-tenth, one-ninth, one-eighth, one-seventh, one-sixth. It depends on how much khushu and tranquility you have. So what is the advice after this call? Assalamu alaikum. Sister Halima, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. How are you? Fine, thank you. Go ahead, Sister Halima. I'm listening. Okay, I have two questions regarding the rulings on Muharram for women. Mahram, you mean? Yes, Mahram. Okay, go ahead. Um... I wanted to know what is the stand of females traveling to another country without a mahram yeah. to attain additional qualification, which is essential for their field of study. Okay. And then my second question is, yeah. how about females going for hajj? Okay, there's uh, basically... Without a personal mahram, yeah. but... Uh under a government pilgrim officials which are appointed to accompany them. Okay, got your question, Sister 
Halima. Well, traveling without a male mahram for a woman, the vast majority of the scholars, and based on the sound a hadith, are in agreement that it is not permissible, even if it is for whatever. Because in the sound hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, a woman who believes in Allah and in the last day should not travel alone without a male mahram of her. This is for her own protection. Is there an exception? Yes, there is. Like every command, there is an exception in cases of emergency and due to necessity. I have to do it and I don't have a mahram. Traveling for treatment, a, a woman was uh, you know, um, an expat with her husband and he expires and now she wants to go home. She got to travel by herself as an exception. And many of the scholars exempted traveling for Hajj or Umrah if the woman is traveling in a safe company. Like nowadays, the government organizes, uh, you know, big caravans, big groups, and they have supervisors and, and so on. So they said, in this case, it is permissible. These are the two different opinions in this regard, and we're gonna take a short break. We'll be back, inshallah, in a couple of minutes. Please stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. I would like to remind with our phone numbers there is a slight change. We have a new number that is added in the segment area code 002 then 0100-546-9323 and the other number is still the same which is area code 002 then 023855132. Well brothers and sisters um, we do have many questions but I believe our brother's question about how to uh, overcome this problem which is my problem as well as everyone's problem uh, maintaining khushu, concentration, tranquility and paying attention in, in the prayer uh, will be uh, simply by achieving the following doing a perfect uh, ablution and magnifying, honoring and respecting this great act of worship which act of worship? The only act of worship which is prescribed by Allah directly without any intermediary. Zakat, jihad, fasting, you name it, have been revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, through Angel Gabriel. The only act of worship which was communicated directly by Allah to his messenger, peace be upon him, was a prayer. Just remember. When Angel Gabriel says to Muhammad, peace be upon him, after they cross the seventh heaven, he say, now I can go any further. If I proceed on, I will get burned. But if you proceed on, you will find your way easy. So he goes and he communicates with Allah and Allah ordains upon him. How many prayers? Fifty. Fifty daily prayers. He takes them with pleasure. While he is descending, he meets his brother Moses in the sixth heaven. He says, what did your Lord give you? He said, he instructed me to pray 50 times a day. He said, well, I was a prophet before you. I doubt that your people can afford to do it. He said, well, so what do you advise? He said, go back and ask him for takhfif, to make it lighter. So he went back and Allah made him 40. Back and forth, back and forth until they were reduced to five. And Allah the Almighty said, there are only five now. But if you do the five, you'll get the reward of 50. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Mustafa from Algeria. Assalamu alaikum, Mustafa. Yes. Go ahead, brother. How are you? How are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you for asking. Uh, actually, I would like to ask you a question, Chief. Okay. I won't be able to answer you unless if you mute your TV because of the echo, okay? Now it's better. Go ahead, Mustafa. Okay, so my first question is, so I would like to ask you only one question. So actually we have got a mosque which is next to us. Mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, almost uh, 200 meters just uh, near to my house. 
and I, I usually I usually do the prayer in mosque and uh, alhamdulillah. And uh, and uh, for, sometimes uh, when I get back from my work and I get uh, very tired sometimes because of the nature of my work. Uh, sometimes I do the prayer at home. So is it is my prayer acceptable, or uh, sometimes I have to I have to struggle in order to do it in the mosque? All right. Thank you, Mustafa. I got your question. Basically, he's asking about uh, the uh, ruling on praying in congregation. If you have a nearby masjid and you can hear the adhan, then according to the vast majority of the scholars and the more I do, you should attend the prayer in congregation. There are many indications in this regard to the point that the Prophet, peace be upon him, was very mad with those who would neglect praying in the masjid and he was about to do something very terrible for them to burn their houses this is in the hadith so if the person is regular in attending the prayer in congregation 200 meters isn't much you know you can cover them in in, in a few minutes okay uh, in a couple minutes you can cover them so that you can attend the prayer in congregation and you're lucky because you have a masjid which is not far away nor is it um, you know, adjacent to your house. Why? Because each footstep, 200 meters, you can cover them in approximately 300 steps one way, and another 300 steps returning back. One of the companions, who was the farthest away from the uh, prophetic masjid, and he would not miss a single prayer. So some of the companions suggested, why don't you get yourself a donkey or a ride at least in Isha and in Fajr prayer? you can attend, uh, you know, it will protect you against the harmful insects. He said, you know what? I anticipate a word from Allah for my not only going to the masjid, but also returning. So your footsteps to attend the jama'ah, going to the masjid, and after you finish returning home, all of that rewards for you. We need that. We need that. It is a remedy. It is healing. It is boosting to our iman. We need that. Sometimes you're worn out. Sometimes you're so tired. You cannot do it. Okay, pray in congregation with your family at home, with your wife, with your kids. You don't do that on a regular basis. Your prayer is valid, but you're missing the word. Subhanallah. One of our predecessors who missed the prayer in the, in, in the masjid. So he decided to pray 27 times. Why 27 times? According to the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar. صلاة الرجل في جماعة تفضل صلاة الفذ بسبع وعشرين درجة. When you pray any prayer in congregation, I'm talking about the five daily prayers. Its reward is greater than praying the same prayer twenty-seven times. Okay, so this person prayed the same prayer that he missed twenty-seven times, and he has seen in his night vision one who's telling him that a sort of inspiration that. That's not even close to if you have prayed it in jama'ah, in the masjid. It is a virtue. It is a blessing from Allah that you have a masjid nearby that you can attend the jama'ah in. Don't take it for granted. Don't get bored. Keep doing so. This is your path to paradise. And this is an advice to myself and to all the viewers as well. But if you're sick, if you're tired to the point that you feel it will be burdensome for you you can pray in um, at home and it would be better if you can lead your family in a congregational prayer as long as it happens occasionally that is not the default okay every time I say to myself this time I will not let Satan deceive me I'm not gonna think about anything in the prayer other than Allah other than whatever I'm reciting in the prayer well, in order to do that, you have to understand the meaning of what you're citing. So reflecting upon what you read in the prayer is very important. In the sound hadith, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that Allah the Almighty said in the sacred hadith, I've divided the prayer and the word salah here does not mean the actual prayer. It refers to the recitation of Surah Al-Fatiha. That is understood from the text. He said, I've divided the recitation 
of the opening of the book, which is compulsory, it's a pillar in every single rak'ah, whether in fard or voluntary prayer, between me and my servant into two halves. So when my servant says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, everyone says it 17 times a day. But how many of us, when you say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, pauses? Why? Because you want to hear what Allah would say in reply to you. He says, Hamadani Abdi. Allah responds to you by saying, You thanked me. My servant have thanked me. Then when you recite, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, or Allah the Almighty says, Majadani Abdi. My servant glorified me. Malik Yawmiddin. Allah the Almighty replies you by saying, Asna alayya abidi. My servant had praised me. So every time you recite a verse, there is a response from Allah. Only when you take heed, when you pay attention to that, and you ponder over the meaning of what you're reciting, this is when you will get khushua and you maintain tranquility in the prayer. By the end, Allah the Almighty says, Now let my servant ask, so you ask the greatest mas'ala. The greatest supplication ever is to receive guidance, is to be rightly guided, and is to maintain your guidance on the straight path. اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ When you say that, Allah the Almighty says, هَذَا لِعَبْدِي وَلِعَبْدِي مَا سَأَلْ You've asked for guidance, I shall give you what you've asked for. Look, oh, now you perceive the communication. There is a dialogue between you and Allah the Almighty. On the other hand, somebody says, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Malik, Yawm din All in one breath. He's in a hurry. Why are you in a hurry? How much time does any prayer take from you? A few minutes. This is the act of worship which gives you a chance to communicate with Allah. If you want to talk to Allah, enter the prayer. كان صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا حزبه أمر فزع إلى الصلاة which means if anything would worry him he doesn't have to consult a friend he doesn't have to call somebody who's an expert Allah is there he would rush to pray simply rush to pray and communicate with Allah there is a beautiful book by Dr. Muhammad Salih Al-Munajjid talking about 33 means of acquiring khushu and the prayer and it is also available in English and it is for free online you can look into those reasons and means it will help you a great deal and you need to revise them every now and then in order to acquire and maintain khushu one last advice for the sake of time we can go through all of them watch our program the prophet's prayer it is very important it will help you in a very simple way to pray as the prophet peace be upon him used to pray that will help you to gain khushu number two one of the most valuable advices in this regard is an advice that is presented by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to one of his companions. He said, Salli ka'annaka muwadda. Since I was young, I hear the Imam always saying to us when he turns around to a line of the rose, he says, Sallu salata muwadda. <clears throat> what does it mean after this call? Assalamu alaikum. Faiza from the case, say, Assalamu alaikum, sister. Welcome to Ask Wada. How are you? Uh, I'm fine, thank you. Um, I was wondering about, I have two questions. The first one is whether during Fajr and Maghrib and Isha, whether or not we, um, women can pray loudly. And my second question is whether people can purchase houses and cars at auctions. Okay, sure. Is it permissible in Islam? So you got two questions about, you know, reciting audibly in the audible prayers Fajr, Maghrib and Isha for women and the second is uh, taking part or participating in buying whatever through an auction right? Yes. Okay. With regards to your first Thank question you. you're welcome Faiza. With regards to your first question it is permissible to recite in an audible voice where you can hear yourself no problem this is for a man or a woman okay 
<coughs> excuse me uh, the second question attending an auction is definitely permissible provided no gharar what is gharar you know they sometimes play gimmicks where the item is worth a say that you're buying a phone which is worth you know a couple hundred and somebody participates in the auction to jag the price with no intention of buying that is called najish and this is not permissible this is haram but if the auction is fair an item is for sale and everyone is bargaining and giving a price and we sell it to the highest bid that is perfectly fine so bidding in this case is lawful um, the beautiful advice before we wrap it up for today um, if the director is telling me you only have one minute left then I have a lot of things to say he says yes I have a lot of things to say then I must choose the most important advice right what if you know that the Khan prayer is gonna be your last soon after you make the slim you will expire are you going to think about anything else in the prayer other than the prayer other than your faith other than your sins and how to remit them and how to get them forgiven I doubt I doubt priority because I'm gonna be dying right now I will not think about business trade I'm not think about my office I don't think about you know uh, buying a new suit or buy changing my car into the year model that will not occupy my mind and these are the things which keep us distracted in the prayer you know worldly things a single prayer which is accepted perfectly from you is better than the whole world and what it contains in the sound hadith Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said Raka'ata al-Fajr khayrun min ad-dunya wa ma fiha the two units not the Fajr prayer yo we're talking about the Sunnah before is better than the whole world and what it contains not your business not your clinic not your house not your neighborhood the whole world and what it contains it's not worth it so what I need to do is once I say Allahu Akbar it's called by the way takbiratul ihram because now I commence into a sacred condition think about Allah think about communicating with Allah in this beautiful dialogue take your time while reciting and if you pass by an ayah <coughs> which talking about mercy then ask Allah for mercy if you're talking about if an ayah that uh, is mentioning uh, atonement seek refuge with Allah again is atonement the faith of the non-believers and so on so you keep yourself busy in the prayer with communicating with Allah then you come in ruku'ah you think about the meaning of glory be to Allah the great you come in sujood glory be to Allah the most high and you keep yourself busy supplicating in your sujood and so on this is just briefly an advice as how to keep khushu'ah in the prayer in case that Satan comes to you to distract your attention that happens and the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned about some of the tricks that he does in order to distract your attention in the prayer simply do like this turn slightly to your left hand side like this and blow tries the resume he would run away from you he may come back but do that whenever it is necessary in order to maintain khushua in the prayer by that brothers and sisters will come to the end of today's edition of your program ask Uda. I ask Allah the great to forgive us all our sins Allahumma inna na'udhu bika an nushika bika shay'an na'lamu wa nastaghfiruka lima la na'lamu aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam until next time assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Allah is my heart's speech your mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance and in your deen allow me to advance. Help me in my quest, permit me to pass the ultimate test.